Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, all, for the seminar today. And it's a great pleasure to have uh, Jan Manshaw from uh, Trinity College, Dublin. And he will tell us about something, uh, uh, his latest work with uh, on uh, modular bootstrap of B4D2B0 interface. Okay, over to you, Jan. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Ayan and uh, Cyrus. Thanks for the um, kind invitation to, to speak. Um, so I will talk about uh, two, two papers. Uh, one is this, uh, the paper on the, the modular bootstrap for D42, uh, D0 indices, um, co-authored with Sergei Alexandrov, Navak Adam, and Boris Pioli. And if time allows, I will also discuss a little bit uh, an earlier paper on scaling black holes and, and modularity. Um, with uh, Swapname model and uh, Aradita Toto Patiaya. Um, okay, so just to maybe introduce the, the, the subject uh, a little bit. Um, BPS or supersymmetric uh, black holes in, uh, in, in supersymmetric theories of, of gravity or string theory compactifications provide a, a very rich context for the study of quantum gravity. Um, and uh, going back to the, the 90s, there were a big um, lot of, of progress, and particularly using the, the Cardi, Cardi formula, it was uh, established that the, the microscopic entropy of, uh, of say, D-brain systems um, corresponded to the microscopic entropy based on the horizon area of the, of the black hole. Um, so in the, this, uh, this talk, I will report on some, some recent work um, where we consider black holes with, with small charges, the Cardi formula um, um, was, is, is most, uh, in a sense, accurate for, for so-called large black holes with large uh, electric and magnetic charges. And we will consider in this talk um, black holes with, with small charges or with at least one of the charges is, is small. Um, and then uh, for these special uh, black holes, we will be able to get um, exact, uh, fully exact um, results. So, um, right, so let me introduce a little bit the, the n equals to two uh, supergravity. Um, so the relevant field content is, is split in the so-called uh, vector multiplets, where we have a set of gauge fields uh, f uh, with superscript a, um, a running from zero to a number p two. Um, why I just know that p two will become uh, clear late in one of the later slides. You have an electromagnetic charge uh, gamma, where the p's are the, the magnetic charges, with p0 and, and pa, uh, and then qa and q0 for the electric charges, and a running from 1 to, um, to b2. And in the, the vector multiplet, there's also a, uh, besides the, the gates field, there's a complex uh, scalar field uh, denoted by uh, xa, and then there are the, the usual uh, fermions. Another a quantity which will often appear as the uh, Dirac Swinger Swanziker uh, symplectic inner product of, say, two uh, vectors gamma one and gamma two, which is just the pairing between uh, the magnetic. The magnetic vectors are multiplying the uh, electric vector vectors of the of the second vector, and and vice versa. The magnetic vectors of the of the second vector multiply the electric uh, uh, charges of the of the first vector. Um, and the, one of the main kind of uh, ingredients to uh, define the, the or uh, uh, write down the, the action of the of supergravity is the, the classical prepotential, um, which is um, given in terms of the, the scalar fields XA. And it's usually written as, as follows it's DABC with the little a's BC running from one to, to B2. Um, okay, um, this is a. Um, um, it has three indices, and, and then it's divided by uh, by x here. Um, yeah, please, um, anyone, don't uh, hesitate to ask any any questions. Um, the top. Okay. So we we are thinking of uh, we obtain this 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 uh, supergravity theory within within string theory. By compactifying, uh, you take the, the perspective of compactifying type two A string theory on a Calabria free fold, and then the, the topological properties of the Calabria free fold will determine the um, um, the, uh, the the field content. 
So we have, and in particular, the, the Betty numbers give us the numbers of, of cycles. We have the, the first and the sixth Betty numbers equal to one. And then B2 is a, is a, free, a free number. Um, and this is the same B2, which gave us here the number of, uh, of the vector multiplets. Um, it's equal to the, the Betty number of the, the fourth Betty number giving the number of four independent four cycles. And there is a third Betty number, which won't play much of a, of a role in, in this talk. And this, um, the, this, this free tensor here is now the, the triple intersection product. If you have three, uh, if you take three four cycles, then they intersect in, in points. And these, uh, the, these, these um, um, they give this, uh, this free tensor. Okay. Um, now there's also um, these, these scalar field X, which were in the, in the vector multiplet. Uh, they give the, the node, uh, the, the sizes of the various cycles of the Calabi-Yau manifolds. So they are the so-called complexified uh, Kähler moduli, uh, TA of the Calabi-Yau. They are, uh, as the name um, says it, they are, they are complex. We have the, the B field uh, plus I times the, the real Kähler form. And they're related to these the, 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 the scalar fields of the vector multiplets as just a ratio of xA and, uh, and x0. And one can think of these, uh, the real Kähler um, moduli as the, giving the two volumes of the, of the Kähler cone. And since they are volumes, uh, they need to be positive. Uh, they have some positivity properties, uh, say j cubed is larger than zero, p dot j squared, and q dot j must all be um, positive for if Q and P correspond to uh, proper cycles rather than um, um, negative cycles, mathematically one says that they are so-called effective. So this gives a, a cone structure to this to the, the Kähler moduli space. And in this, this case here, I uh, plotted this for, um, for, for two-dimensional surface, but you would get a, a Kähler cone um, here, for example. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now the supergravity comes with a, a number of, uh, of of symmetries and uh, and dualities. Um, and so let, let me say a little bit bit more about this. This is a uh, it's a subgroup of the of the symplectic uh, group um, of uh, two times uh, B two plus two uh, matrices. So these act uh, on the leave this um, this this matrix. Uh, sorry, yeah. this one for the. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. There is something very high. Oh, now it has stopped. There was something high pitched going on in the, in the feedback, but now it has stopped. There's a high okay. pitched feed feedback coming through. Yeah, now it is gone. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. I hope it stays away. Let me know if it comes comes back. Okay. Um, so these symplectic matrices they leave this um, this uh, this matrix uh, invariant. Um, in this way, and in the large volume limit, you're considering the, the large volume limit where where j goes to infinity. Then we our kind of geometric intuition for the Calabi-Yau free fold and and uh, wrapping brains uh, on on various cycles is is most accurate. Um, then there is a subgroup of of translation, so we can um, in particular if we act on the on the electromagnetic charges with an element of this symplectic group. We can shift the electric charge to by a multiple of the magnetic charge, and we can shift the um, the, the D zero brain charge Q Q zero uh, by a multiple then of the electric charge and also of the magnetic charge, and at the same time uh, the Kähler moduli are are shifted or the the B field uh, here is is shifted. And this leaves invariant uh, all the, the masses of the of the different uh, objects, uh, and so it is it's a, it's a symmetry of the of the spectrum. Uh, and in, a, in addition, we also have so called large gauge transformation that shift the the Ramon Ramon uh, one forms um, by uh, by an, uh, an integer element. Um, I mean, in addition, there is a. Uh, an SL to Z duality group or um, a strong weak coupling uh, duality group. Um, so these are the, the familiar elements, two by two matrices with uh, integer entries, which have unit uh, determinant. Uh, this is more manifest in, in type 2B um, supergravity. So to relate 
our D brain systems to type to B, we can do a, a T duality on the on the time uh, the time circle, and it would relate uh, physical or uh, physical D brains which are extended along the, the time direction um, to uh, instantonic brains. So there's a, a useful connection to uh, between D instantons and type to B um, uh, supergravity or type to B string theory, and uh, say the um, uh, black hole black holes and type 2a supergravity. And we have explored this in a number of, of papers with, uh, with Boris Piolin and, and Sergei Alexandrov, Sivasis uh, Banagi, um, because we can derive from the, the instanton uh, perspective, the useful properties of the, the black hole uh, partition functions. Um, so how does, does this, this S duality group um, act? What well, acts on a, as usual, on a modular parameter tau, which is then the the the, the Ramon one zero form uh, plus the inverse uh, inverse coupling, and then tau just acts by these fractional linear uh, transformations. It also acts on the the the, the C fields, all these um, Ramon uh, potentials. Um, they are mixed with the, the B field, and and uh, and similarly, then B is is uh, um, is a linear combination of of of, of C and, and B. And also the, the Kähler form transforms under the, this duality, it uh, transforms with weight, or you can say weight, weight half, half for the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic um, uh, uh, um, Sorry, a stupid question. Uh, the C carries this A index, right? Yeah, B2. this, yeah. How, what is the meaning? B, B mu is just one of them, right? So how does the index structure work? Sorry, the yeah. So the B mu nu is just a single one, right? Or am I missing something? No, Listen. these these are. Oh, the flux is through the yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I they are. It. I they got are, it. I got, got it. it. I got it. Uh, that's okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry, but I, I've reduced the indices because yeah, of yeah. The, the the. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. It was my fault. Yeah. Right, thanks. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Um. Um, so together, these, these, these groups, they, um, they form the so-called uh, Jacobi group as of to Z direct product with, uh, with translation set to the, the B2 squared, uh, which will come back um, a bit later in the talk when we uh, discuss the, the partition functions. Um, okay, so let me now turn to more interesting objects or the, interest, the objects of interest in, in supergravity. Um, so we have the, the black hole uh, solutions uh, with near horizon um, ADS2 times uh, S2 uh, geometry. Now in these uh, solutions, the defective multiple scalars are typically position uh, dependent and they require they are required by supersymmetry to, to satisfy the attractor equations um, in the near horizon ADS2 times uh, S2 geometry. So we, we can um, specify these, these moduli at infinity uh, pretty much um, it's, it's, it's a boundary condition. We can uh, specify them to some value we, we want. But then along, if you go into the, the black hole, the um, attractor e equations will, the, uh, the moduli will, will flow uh, described by the attractor equations and they will um, satisfy a specific value on the horizon of the, of the black hole. Uh, and that, that specific value is determined by the electromagnetic uh, charges, uh, gamma. So that's denoted here, Ta of, uh, of zero is then some value capital T uh, specified by the electromagnetic charges uh, um, Okay, and then one can determine the, the black hole entropy uh, just as a, as a quarter of the of the horizon area, and it comes out in this little bit complicated uh, uh, expression. It's pi times minus two thirds p cubed q hat uh, zero. Let me just specify p cubed. Um, is D, A, B, C, D, A, B, B, uh, B, C. And uh, then Q hat zero is this uh, combination of the D zero brain charge and uh, the square of the electric, uh, uh, of the other electric charges, D two brain charges. And it's, uh, it is negative, typically negative, and that's why there's an additional uh, minus sign there. Um, Okay, so this is the kind of the, the space-time perspective with the, the classical 
uh, horizon area, which uh, in the 90s people were interested um, to, to find a microscopic uh, description. And um, I will say a little bit more about this when we reach the, the, the partition functions. Besides this, these single center black holes, uh, there are also multi center uh, black holes. And so they take schematically uh, this form here. So we have, say, for example, three centers. And then we have these, uh, these interdistances. We have three centers with charges gamma 1, gamma 2, and gamma 3. And we have uh, distances, say, R13 uh, between them. And the, the um, equations of motions, they will specify um, uh, a phase space for these distances between the, the different centers. Um, so these, these are aesthetic BPS bound states. They set, uh, satisfy as many supersymmetries as the, the single center black hole I was showing before. Uh, and this is possible due to the interplay between the gravitational attraction and the electromagnetic uh, repulsion in these, um, for these, uh, these um, uh, solutions. And these, these bound states, therefore, uh, they, they contribute to the, the one particle Hilbert space, uh, H BPS for specific uh, total charge gamma, in this case, gamma is gamma one, gamma two plus gamma three. Uh, and, um, and we need to specify the, the, the modulus uh, T. Um, so the, the equations of motion, the, the kind of the, the phase space for these, uh, these interdistances is, is given by the, 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 the NEF equations uh, going back to um, the NEF around, uh, around 2000. Um, and they take the, the following form. So we have, we have that uh, symplectic inner product, uh, gamma ij. I'm not sure whether I specified this, but gamma ij is uh, just this uh, anti-symmetric uh, inner product uh, divided by the, the distances rij. And this is a, um, a must equal some expression on the, the right-hand side in terms of the, the central charges, which in particular depend on the, the the electromagnetic charge gamma and these uh, these scalar model it. Uh, oh, here I, I wrote this up. Um, and so in this way we get a, a phase space for these these solutions. And it has one can show that it has dimension uh, two times n, where n is the number of uh, of different uh, black hole centers, two uh, n minus uh, minus two. Um, okay. So there are a few as interesting aspects of these, uh, these solutions. One is the notion of, of wall crossing. Namely, solutions can uh, either decay or recombine if you vary the, these uh, parameters on the, on the right-hand side. You can vary this, these, uh, these uh, Kähler model i t, and then these uh, c might uh, change sign. Uh, and when that happens, the, the radius, uh, one can see that these radii uh, can go to, to infinity. So, for example, if we, we take this uh, case for n is equal to two, um, then we have just one independent uh, equation. And so we get then for the limit of R12 is the limit of, uh, of C1 to zero comma one divided by C1. So that goes to plus or minus infinity. And we see that this is nat in the, naturally this, uh, these two black hole centers, they go infinitely far apart if you approach uh, the, the wall of marginal stability. Um, and that's then also why we see that these, uh, the Hilbert space of, the, of these BPS black holes is, uh, um, depends on the, the Kähler model IT uh, because we have this phenomenon of, uh, of wall crossing. Um, okay. And another um, aspect is that there exists so-called scaling solutions. And, namely, and these are solutions where the, the centers can get arbitrarily close. Um, they don't exist for every uh, choice of, of, of gamma i, um, but um, if they satisfy certain conditions for a particular uh, so-called triangle inequalities, uh, then these uh, these centers can be uh, scaled all the way down to uh, to two zero. So they get, get get arbitrarily close, where they become, uh, in a sense, independent, um, or they cannot be distinguished from a, from a single center uh, black hole. Uh, from uh, from the outside. Uh, Jan, can I ask something? Uh, yeah. So in this uh, in this parameter space, two n minus two, is it flat? All the directions are flat. 
Um, no, no, they are they're typically not not flat. Uh, for example, if for for n is equal to two, you would get a get a sphere. Um, yeah, you would get this because one is is fixed at the origin, and then the other one is just the distance is fixed. So you get the, you get a full sphere. You can uh, where you can uh, place the other the other no. center. What I meant by flat is that whether this costs energy to move from one point to another. Oh, in that sense, uh, yeah, that, that, yes. yeah. There is no, uh, there's no cost in energy. They all have the same, the same mass. So yeah, that's that's true. So that they, they seem, there's no no cost in. They're all in, the, in that sense grounded. Uh, um, yeah, they have the same mass as the as the full full black hole. So there's no. And, and there's something that protects this flatness. Uh, super symmetry. Is, uh, super, symmetry. Uh, super symmetry. Super symmetry. Protects, uh, BPS. BPS. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, sorry, uh, uh, can I ask a quick question? Uh, uh, it's, it's actually uh, I'm just a little confused. Uh, probably is just a notation or I, I, I guess I joined a bit late. So when you were mm -hmm. talking about uh, the attractor uh, mechanism, the attractor equations, you at least you alluded to them. So yeah. uh, if I recall, uh, usually they, uh, the attractor equations have to do with the uh, Precisely the B three part, which you have uh, you decided not to consider. I mean, they have to do at least in the context of dynamic black holes. They have to do with relating charges to components of the period vector. So, uh, but here you don't seem to be concerned about uh, B three. So, is it that you're looking at the mirror version thereof, or am I? Yeah, that? I think that's that's it. I'm looking at the two A picture. So it is the 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 scale the, the vector built plot model I are. The, the model uh, model I of, of two cycles and they are fixed by the, the attractor mechanism. But if you will be in 2B, then the vector model that model I are uh, indeed the complex structure model I. We would okay. be looking at, uh, at B3. Okay, thanks. thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? Um, so, um, okay, so let me, so the, yeah, there's a scaling regime for um, if, in particular, if there are free centers, they satisfy these uh, triangle inequalities, then you can scale these, um, these centers all the way down to, um, to kind of, to the, to become uh, nearly coincident, and they cannot be distinguished from the, the semi-central black hole. Let me look a little bit in, in uh, more detail at the D42, D0 black holes. Um, so these are the, the black holes where there is no uh, D6 brain uh, charge. And so we set the, the vector P0 we had in the beginning uh, always to, to zero. Uh, and then the remaining charges are the D4 brain charge uh, P and D2 brain charge Q. They have the upper and the lower index A and the zero brain charge uh, Q naught. So we can abbreviate it to just this uh, free factor. Um, and now we have a for a given magnetic charge P, we get a quadratic form uh, in, in, in this way, DAB is DABC PC. And this gives us a quadratic form on the lattice of the uh, electric charges Q, um, since we can invert this, uh, the, this matrix uh, DAB to uh, D inverse. Um, Within this is AB, um, and one can show that these uh, this this lattice for the electric charges with this quadratic form has signature one comma uh, B two minus one. So it is not not definite. It has depending on if B two is larger than than one, you get a negative uh, directions in this uh, in this the um, and I, I should uh, say that much of what I had said and what uh, what I say is is going back to this uh, paper by Malazina, Strominger, and, and Witten, which is uh, now uh, over twenty five years um, ago. Oh, sorry, Jan. Um, uh, I apologize. Just one quick question. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you, uh, since you're working the type two A side of the story, uh, so you are you kind of working in the uh, because I don't see any any watch and instantons being considered. So. Are you assuming that you're considering some sort of a large volume limit uh, in which the contributions of volume suppressed or something of that sort? 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. If you work in a large volume uh, limit, and so it's enough to work with the with the leading term in the in the prepotential, and, and the, yeah, there will be the, the one loop correction, but that's basically uh, uh, as as far as we will go in terms of the the prepotential. That's okay, right. Thanks. Um, okay, so we are to determine the, the microscopic uh, black hole entropy, we consider the, the so-called BPS index, which is uh, protected with respect to the changes of many parameters, in, 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 in particular the, the complex structure moduli. Um, but we have, uh, we have already seen that there is this phenomena of, of wall crossing, so there is a dependence on the, on the, on the Kähler moduli T, which I explicitly add to, this, um, to the argument. Uh, then this um, the BPS index is a trace over the, the Hilbert space of a fixed electromagnetic charge gamma at this scalar modulus t, and it's uh, with f the fermion number it reads as f squared minus one to the f, and then it it localizes on, on half BPS states in the in the supergravity. And, um, and yeah. Um, and of course, this is an integer. That's, um, now, as um, was indeed uh, mentioned, we, um, I'm looking at the, the large volume, uh, large volume limit. So we take J in particular to be very, uh, very large. Um, and in the this large volume region of the of the moduli space, there is an analog of the of the attractor point where. Basically, at the, at the attractor point, uh, things that at the attractor point typically there are no uh, multi center solutions. Um, now, there's a, a similar notion uh, of, of a large volume attractor point, which uh, reads as follows it's D, um, D A B Q B. Simply, this is this is index A. Um, and, and then I times uh, lambda times PA with a very large, uh, very large lambda. So the, the true attractor point is also proportional to, uh, to PA, but we scale, scale this up in order to, to stay in the large volume limit. So we, the, um, the whole analysis in the, is in the, the large volume uh, limit. And then the BPS indices um, evaluated at these, these, uh, these large volume, this far large volume attractor point uh, we denote them by uh, omega gamma t lambda gamma. We, we call them also MSW invariants uh, um, or Maldazina Strominger uh, Witten invariants from the, the study in the, in the 90s. Um, and now these, these invariants, one can, one can show that they are invariant under the, the spectral flow symmetry or these uh, translations in, uh, in the symplectic group we discussed earlier. Um, um, and such that they are only depend uh, on the class uh, of, of Q in lambda star, uh, in lambda star mod, mod lambda. So we can um, localize to a, to a subset. We don't have to, to, um, to study the full. Uh, we don't get different, uh, different indices for all possible uh, D2 brain charges. It's enough to, to look at the, consider the D2 brain charges in this, uh, this finite set. Any questions? Um, okay. In addition, we have uh, the so-called rational invariant. Um, so these are the note, uh, in notation, they differ from the, the integer invariant just by this, this bar on top. And they are defined in terms of the integer invariants um, as follows. So we take all the divisors um, of, of gamma, m is, uh, m is an integer, and then we take a sum over the over omega of gamma slash uh, divided by, by m, and we divide it by m squared if um, M is larger than, than one. So these are uh, rational numbers. Let's say if you have a work with a fixed magnetic charge, the 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 denominators are are bounded. Then we can 
uh, write down the, the partition functions, which are the, the following. So we get a generating function um, of these um, of the rational invariance at the large volume uh, attractor points. And they are multiplied by the usual uh, Boltzmann factor e to the minus uh, tau two times the, the mass of the black holes. And then we have further uh, fugacities for the electric charges. Um, um, C zero multiplying the D zero brain charge and C multiplying the D two brain charge. And we keep the, the magnetic charge uh, fixed. So it is a, it's a partition function for fixed magnetic charge. And we sum over all the, the electric charges. Now this, um, we can write this then in a, um, in the large volume limit, we can write this in a, in a quite a nice, uh, nice way. And uh, if you use this abbreviation tau is equal to C zero plus I times tau two, um, we get the decomposition of this function in terms of a set of functions H P mu of tau times a set of theta series, theta mu tau tau bar C and, and B. So H, H P mu contains all the, in a sense, interesting information. It's a sum over the D zero brain charges. Um, and it is then a generating function of the, of the BPS invariance. Whereas the, the theta series is more like it's a it's a Siegel Norain uh, theta series, um, and um, so it, um, it, had, it contains also a lot of uh, interesting uh, information, um, and in particular, you can determine the modular properties of of H or the expected modular properties from those of the of the theta series. But in a sense, some sense, a, a better, much better defined object than uh, than the HP. Uh, can you explain why we are working with omega bar rather than omega? Um, yeah. Um, let me see. It's, it's not so easy to, to see. It is, there are some. Um, um, yeah, if you start to, if you look at into wall crossing, then it is easier to see that 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 the omega bars they they preserve in the sense them they they uh, they fit better with with uh, modular forms and, and and modular transformations than the integer invariants. Okay. Uh, if you do the wall crossing formula, then you get then uh, the the omega bar. The, inver the omega bar invariants they um, they transform to to products of other omega bars. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, but the otherwise you get if you work with integer invariants you will get uh, say plus and minus one and so you get these uh, uh, Bose and Fermi statistics so you need to um, let me say yeah so then then you. you uh, you don't you don't get a, a product of the the same uh, the same degree. You get things like the delta, the delta of omega, say gamma uh, is um, omega gamma one squared. Oh, sorry, omega comes omega gamma one minus one omega gamma two. Uh, whereas for the for the bar invariant. It's delta omega bar of gamma, and then you get omega bar gamma one squared omega bar gamma gamma two. So that's that's one way to see it. There's also there in the instanton picture there. Uh, people also derive these these um, uh, these these rational invariants. For example, the d zero, uh, the d minus one instanton. You can see this uh, these these rational invariants coming out of the uh, of an instanton uh, calculation, um, but it's a, it's a good question. For so yeah, for example, if you there are the other the connections to say the uh, for formal field theory, and then it, I think it's it's harder to see why from the formal field theory you would get uh, would would get these these rational uh, invariants. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, okay. Okay. So these these HP mu's they are simply Q series, and they we can also write them as as follows to condense notation a little bit. Like the, the C mu n's are the are the, the coefficients, 
And then we have Q to the N minus delta mu and N running over positive, uh, positive integer. So it will start at some, some negative value given by delta mu. And then we have integer, uh, positive integer, um, uh, uh, power series with positive integer N. So the terms with N minus delta mu smaller zero, we call the, the polar terms. And we have then the polar coefficient C mu N. And the, the maximal value of delta mu is given by delta zero, and it's p cubed plus c2 dot p. And in the MSW, so called MSW CFT, this is the, the central charge of the, uh, of the left moving uh, sector. Okay. Um, so I already mentioned that S duality. Uh, acts on the type to be hypermultiplet uh, geometry and requires that one can show that this requires the HP mute to transform as a mock modular form. Um, and this can be completed with, with non holomorphic terms um, um, to H, H hat. So the one, one finds that, that it is too naive to think of these, these H's as, as holomorphic functions of, of tau that are non holomorphic uh, contributions. Um, and so basically the, the so-called depth of the modular form then depends on the, uh, on the, the maximal number, the maximal length of the, the partition of the magnetic vector uh, P. Um, so I, I don't want to go too much detail here, but it's um, say if, if you take a, a 2D P, 2D four brains, uh, you would get a series like, like this, where, you, where H hat is corresponding to the H2, uh, but then there is a non-holomorphic contribution which is subleading compared to the first and this is necessary to make the whole series uh, to transform properly on the, on the modular transformations. Um, I've specified the modular transformations here. I won't uh, go into them in full detail. If you do the, the modular inversion or the S transformations tau to minus one over tau, we get a series um, here with the, the weight and then there are some um, some uh, roots of unity, and you get a sum over all the other uh, ages, and it is a uh, uh, and it is basically invariant up to a phase under the shift tau to tau plus one, and both of them inter uh, generate the full uh, modular group. Um, and then basically, um, um, one can show that the the, the, the Cardi formula, or mathematically the Rademacher formula. Uh, gives this uh, this exponential growth of the of the coefficients e to the uh, pi times minus two thirds times p q plus c to the p times q zero hat, uh, which is then in perfect agreement with the, the macroscopic uh, entropy. Um, okay, okay. So in the the, the paper I, I alluded to, we would like to get. Um, um, write down these partition functions precisely for simple uh, settings for simple magnetic charges and, and simple Calabi-Yau manifolds. And uh, for this, it's, it's useful to know that the spaces of modular forms of a fixed weight and multiplier system, the multiplier systems are these, uh, the, is what we denote uh, with the, are basically given by the, the phases here. Um, these are uh, finite dimensional uh, spaces. Um, and so we, uh, we specialize to manifolds, Clabiao manifolds with B2 is equal to uh, 2, 1. And let us denote this the space of vector, appropriate vector uh, modular forms, then by this, this curly M. Um, then the, if you, we want to determine the dimension of this, this space, uh, there's a natural upper bound for the dimension of this space, which is given by the number of, of polar terms. So we can just sum up all these, these deltas or the, the, the largest, the smallest integer larger than delta. And, and that will give us a number and that's an upper bound for the dimension of this, uh, this space. And there's a symmetry between mu and, um, and minus mu so that reduces this, um, that we don't have to sum over, for that reason, we don't have to sum over of the negative mu. But this is an, an upper bound. Uh, there are further uh, constraints on these, these functions. Um, and they are, it's a bit, a di yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit uh, di di difficult uh, calculation, 
but the leading terms of the of the constraints uh, for these uh, Calabi Hellman faults goes as five times uh, times d, where d is this uh, combination here. It's basically kappa times the, the number of the four brains uh, plus one divided by two, and then the uh, the smallest integer larger than than that. Um, and those constraints you can think of, uh, say, come up that there are no non-trivial holomorphic functions on a, on a compact space. And one also sees those constraints if you try to construct them, the modular forms as a, as a Poincaré series, um, that the Poincaré series does not transform as a modular form uh, unless um, you um, uh, unless you put further constraints on the uh, on the on the polar uh, on the polar coefficients. Um, so the total dimension of these 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 modular the space of the modular forms is then the number of, of polar the number of, of polar coefficients minus the, the number of the, the constraints. Um, for the, the polar coefficients, the, the classical entropy for a single black hole is purely imaginary because uh, this uh, q hat zero is, is negative. So we get the negative. It's, it's positive, sorry, for the polar coefficients, q hat zero is, is positive. So we get a negative argument of this, uh, this square root. Um, and this is unphysical, but um, the, so that's why we see that the, 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 the polar terms must be due to multi-center uh, black holes. So we can still have uh, multi-center uh, black holes, but they cannot be uh, single center. Um, this goes back to the, the paper by Giotto, Strominger, Yin, and uh, the Neff Moore from 2006 and 2007. And already back in, in 2006 uh, and 2007, Giotto, Strominger, Yin, and Giotto, Yin determined in this way exact expressions for these H1 mu for various uh, Calabi-O manifolds, um, in particular uh, these, these couple. Um, so in the, in the meantime, quite a, a number of techniques were developed to determine the degeneracies of, of multi-center black holes, in particular uh, using uh, so-called flow trees, which are one-dimensional approximations of the, of the attractor flows, uh, and also the, the coulomb branch formula. Um, so with this kind of larger toolbox, uh, we, we thought to, to readdress this, this, this question to determine uh, polar terms and try to bootstrap from there the, the full uh, partition function. Um, because if we know these, these polar coefficients, if we can determine the polar coefficients, then we, we know we have enough information to, to determine the full, uh, full partition function. So now the, the most polar states but, um, are, consist of, of pairs of, of D6 and, and anti-D6 brains uh, together with uh, D2 and, and D0 brains. For the, and we turn on a, a flux on the, on the D6 brain, uh, which generates the, the D4 brain, uh, the, the D4 brain charge. So the, in particular, the most, the most polar term then corresponds to um, uh, correspond to a, a pure uh, D6 brain, and then a D6 bar brain with a, with a unit of, of D4 brain uh, flux. Uh, both centers have, have, a, have just a, consist of a single, a single state. And, and then, the total, uh, then the total entropy comes from, or the total number of states comes from the, this uh, symplectic inner product between these, uh, these two. So you can have a gamma D6 and a gamma D6 bar with the unit uh, flux that uh, gives the degeneracies of the, the most polar uh, state. Um, and then we can uh, start adding a further, a more consider more complicated bound states by adding uh, units of D0 brains and units of, uh, of D2 brains uh, to this uh, picture. Um, now these are, uh, unfortunately, these D6, uh, D2, D0 brains their degeneracies are, are given by Donaldson Thomas invariants, which can in turn be determined in terms of the invariance for the two brains, the Kopakuma Waffa invariance. And um, this then leads us to an, an ansatz, the following ansatz for the, for the polar terms of, the, of these functions H, uh, H1 mu. Uh, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, D6 and D0, D6, D0 brains, they are not supersymmetric, right, at large volume. 
Yeah, there is a there is a wall there. That's, yeah. So so you go to the other side of the wall where it is super symmetric. Yeah. Yeah, they. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so we get this um, the following um, inner product. Uh, this this I one is basically this um, is the is this inner product for the for the the. Uh, the most polar state, um, and then the other ones uh, come with if we um, add uh, the two and the zero brains to the to these uh, these uh, uh, this situation. Um, okay. Okay. And so we we apply this to thirteen uh, complete intersection Calabria varieties for which the the t invariants are are available, and we check then whether we can make. Um, and uh, the full partition function and whether it satisfies um, the properties we, we would like. Uh, let us just, let me do, take a, one of the simplest examples, which is, the, is this complete X intersection X, uh, which is in a, in a, in a product of uh, this, uh, CP6, CP6 times CP6, and we take a number of, of equations. Uh, this Calabria has, has kappa equal to, to one, or this was equal to the, the triple intersection. Um, its second turn class is uh, is twenty two, and therefore we find that there is only a single uh, h one. It is not it, um, it, it's just a vector with one uh, one element, and that the delta zero or the central charge of the, the corresponding uh, CFT is twenty three. Uh, then we have only one polar term, and there are no further uh, constraints. And then this uh, one determines the polar coefficient. It is minus two. And that determines the full uh, then the full Q series because there's only one um, um, there's only one modular form that satisfies that satis that transforms in the in the right way um, under these um, under the S duality transformations. Um, okay, so applying this to to these these thirteen Calabria manifolds. Um, we find that for, for 10 out of the 13 Calabria uh, manifolds, this, this all works well. This includes uh, two manifolds, um, X33 and X44, for which there are these additional constraints. So even the, the additional constraint matches perfectly uh, with, the, um, with, the, with, the, with the ansatz. Uh, there are, however, four or three um, other Calabria manifolds for which we we don't get an integer Q series with uh, with integer coefficients. For this this case, when P is equal to one, uh, one finds only uh, integer coefficients because the rational uh, invariants are um, you would not you would not get any, any uh, uh, all the charges are, are primitive, so you wouldn't get any uh, rational invariants. Um, so this is still to be uh, understood uh, better. Um, so we. We expect that the just the, the spectrum is is of the polar terms is more complicated. We need to include more more complicated uh, bound states, maybe pairs of d six and anti d six uh, brains. Um, and there is a similar situation if we increase the the number of d four brains. If we go to uh, to two d four brains, uh, then we, we have seen that this uh, we expect mock modular forms, um, and uh, we have tried to you know, engineer the the polar spectrum. Using the, the the various uh, techniques, but also here we, we don't get a fully uh, consistent uh, partition functions, so that's still um, work in progress. Um, and in the, the last uh, minutes, let me briefly say something um, about the the other paper on the the scaling solutions. So the the scaling solutions are solutions where we have uh, free black holes which can all scale deep into one center where they are in um, indistinguishable from a single center uh, black hole. And if you go to more complicated Calabria manifolds than the ones I was uh, discussing before, namely the ones with B2 uh, larger than one, and we consider um, 
magnetic charges P, which we can write as a sum of, uh, of at least three, uh, three linearly independent, um, or at least two need to be linearly independent uh, magnetic charges, then such scaling solutions can, uh, can exist um, also for, uh, for centers with, uh, with D4, brain, uh, D4 brain charge. So you can have three uh, say D4 brain black holes which can, uh, which can form a, a scaling solution. And in that uh, paper, we, uh, we discussed generating functions for, these, uh, for these, these centers, the contribution of these, these scaling solutions uh, to the partition function of the D4 brain, um, um, to the partition function of the, of the D4 brains. Um, so this takes the, the, following, uh, the following form. Um, there's a notion of, of total invariance, which you can think of as the, 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 um, the index of the, of the of a single center black hole. And then we get the, 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 the generating function of the, of the total uh, D4 brains at the large volume attractor point corresponds to the, the term coming from the, a single, from the single D4 brain, with a single center uh, black hole. And then you get, uh, we get different uh, terms corresponding to multi-center. Uh, scaling solutions. So at the, this large volume attractor point, there are only the, the scaling solutions to um, potentially still still contribute the, the the bound states which can decay from a wall of marginal stability. They they would have uh, decayed at that at that point. Um, so we study then in particular this, uh, this 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 pre factor, which is a pre factor. It's in a sense. Uh, determines whether those scaling solutions contribute um, or not. Um, this is this this function uh, psi for uh, for for free centers. Uh, now we get a sum over quite a, a large lattice. This uh, a, this uh, bold phase lambda is um, basically a linear linear sum of the of the lattices. Uh, lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three, uh, and then uh, as, um, localized to the set where the, the total charge is equal to uh, two q, so q one plus q two plus q three uh, is equal to uh, two mu. Um, so this uh, then is a is a lattice with signature uh, two comma b two um, minus two. And it also takes the, as the, uh, as you can see here, it takes the form of a of a theta series, it takes the form of an, a so called indefinite uh, theta series. And um, we can apply the results from the the, the mathematical uh, literature on these indefinite uh, theta series to um, discuss their their uh, properties like the, the convergence. We show that it, it converges. That is a, a well defined uh, series. And also their the modeler uh, completion in the context of, of mock modeler forms. Um, so this leads to the notion of these uh, generalized error functions. Let me um, don't go into all the details here, uh, but just as a show you to show you an example, we can take uh, Calabi-Yau manifold X to be a, a K free vibration with uh, H11 or or B2 equal to two, and H21 equal to H6, and we have these uh, intersection numbers. And we can choose these electric uh, or these uh, magnetic charges for P1, P2, and, and P3. And we can uh, fully explicitly write down these, uh, these generating, uh, generating functions. Um, okay. So we expect that while well, this is quite technically involved, that these results can also be generalized to scaling solutions with, with more centers. And in that way, we can. Um, this leads to the so-called higher depth uh, mock, uh, mock modular forms, um, and we can get them for arbitrary, say arbitrary Calabi-Yau um, manifolds, at least when B two is larger than uh, than two. So that's bringing me to the end of my my talk. Thank you very much for the attention. Thanks, Jan, for this great seminar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I just have a quick question with your last slide, with respect to your last mm -hmm. slide. I mean, 
there are not too many uh, kinds of mock modular forms, right? There are, there are only a fixed small number of mock modular forms, which will be much less than the space of Calabi-Ava manifolds, right? So the same building block should keep appearing, right, in, in these constructions, in some sense. Yeah, but, well, yes, you would get arbitrary, so these, the, the, the length of these, these vectors is quite, quite large. So you would get kind of effect, vector, their vector value of mock modular forms. Yeah, yeah, I get quite that. Quite a large number of, uh, of components. Mm -hmm. And um, so no, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, these, uh, the, even if you talk of vector valued model, mock, uh, mock modular forms, mm -hmm. there's only a limited, no I mean, if you look at the Umbra and Moonshine story, there are only 24, I mean, one which each, Niemeyer lattice in some sense. So, yeah. so, so that is just a fixed number is what I'm talking about. I mean, it's not something which is uh, of the order of number of Calabiaos. Well, but it I, depends on the, yeah, for any indefinite lattice, if you have an indefinite, indefinite lattice, you can, they, you just pick some, you have, to, you have to pick a polarization kind of thing, right? Yeah, so yeah, here we, if you have an indefinite lattice L, then you need to pick these, these vectors V. And there are conditions for these vectors V such that this sum is convergent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, if you, if the ones that are satisfied, then basically every, every choice um, leads to a mock modular form. Um, <laughs> In, in all the lattices, you said when B2 is one, they become, they just have definite signature. Yeah, that, that is a bit different. So you don't get mock modular forms in those cases. Well, then we, we still expect mock modular forms if we increase the, 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 the rank. Um, but here we can, in a sense, here you can see the mock modular forms very, very explicitly. Here we see it really as a as kind of coming out of the scaling solutions there. We, we understood the mock modular forms um, more from the, the, the type to be the instanton picture of the, of the instanton corrections. And it came as a consistency condition. And it matches very well with, um, with the local case. If you just put a D4 brain on a, on a four manifold, um, one also gets kind of mock modular forms by explicit calculation. And we can reproduce this from that uh, from the say the B two is, is is one um, a case, but otherwise it is true that that's it's a little bit more mysterious. Somehow we it, it comes out of the, the the calculation. Maybe one thing I can point to is uh, is a paper by by Boris Piolin where he he shows that if you uh, above the BPS bound there is a um, one has the the, the spectrum. Of uh, there's a continuous uh, spectrum of, uh, of of black hole bound states, and that the continuous this this continuous uh, uh, spectrum uh, contributes these these non holomorphic terms to the to the partition function. Yeah, so that's how usually any anyway, mock modular forms appear. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but and then then here we really we see it very explicitly coming from the. Um, Kind of for, from 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 the enumerating the, the the degeneracies for the for the bound states, and yeah, actually, but, I'm asking a slightly different question. I know what you're saying. What I'm asking is that I know that there is a that there is a finite number of those mock modular forms. And uh, what you uh, is it possible that you're getting new things from this construction? or you're getting things which are in some sense souped up versions of that. That's my point. I mean, I don't know the answer. Uh, yeah, well, in, in some sense, I think we are getting new things. And it, one way you can also maybe another analogy is that if you have a, a modular form, you know that the space of modular forms are finite, yeah. are, are very small for SL2Z. But if you go to a, a congruent subgroup, Say gamma zero n with yeah. n very large. Mm -hmm. There are you have metal, there can be many forms, many that, that can have a large, large dimension. Yeah. 
Okay. And because these basically these these vector valued modular forms, if they're if 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 they become very long, then each each element of the vector becomes a a modular form for for a congruent subgroup with yes, a, yes. with yes. a large. I agree. Uh, I, agree. Um, I forgot the name of the the term now. But, um, so that uh, I think is the analogy. I, I agree. There is there's a small number of of modular forms, mock modular forms. Yeah, for, okay. for 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 these these congruent subgroups with, uh, with with small n. Um, if you go to higher depth, of course, higher higher depth is already increasing the the um, yeah, it's, it's giving you a larger larger freedom because you can to go to depth depth two, three, four. Yeah, five. yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, but it, I I agree. Then it is still at each level. It seems there is still a, only a, um, it's 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 a small a small set. Um, but then, yeah, the, in sense, then because these lattices are so so big, you get um, more freedom. Yeah, you okay. Get more yeah. from, from there. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so I have a question uh, about the scaling solution. So I don't know whether it's totally related to the talk, but uh, so this uh, do you get some kind of a uh, version of conformal quantum mechanics uh, of in this modular space of scaling solutions or where, where these scaling solutions exist yeah i think i think dieter dieter van den bleken studied that and collaborators um, i see so this kind of conformal quantum mechanics do they capture some parts of this indices in the structure, so um, yeah, I think it it does. Uh, let me. Yeah, the quiver quantum mechanics does does. Uh, yeah, certainly the, the the usual quiver quantum mechanics. Uh, Covers these these coefficients, but um, but these don't don't grow very fast. So in yeah, you would like indeed the conformal quantum mechanics, which captures these so-called pure Higgs states. Um, not sure. Are you familiar with that that notion or single? No, no, I'm not. Sorry. Uh, okay. So the, yeah, there is. If scaling solutions are possible, there is kind of a larger, much larger um, degeneracy, and which is in, in general not not probed by the quantum mechanics, but uh, yeah, you can study them with so, using so-called Higgs brands quantum mechanics. Um, um, is this what is called the entropy enigma in some sense that the scaling solutions can contribute more than? Anything? Yeah, the, the entropy enigma is that the the, the the bound states. It's possible that the the bound states can have a larger entropy than the, the single the center. center, and. Yeah, this this is related then that somehow these that well, if you do this the scaling then the, the, the scaling is is indistinguishable from a from a single center so you would get in a sense a more a better understanding of the of the single center entropy but I don't think the the complete single center is, is reproduced in, in in this way. Okay, um, so I will ask for a reference maybe by email or so because I really. <laughs> Recently, interested in this kind of quantum mechanics. Yeah, yeah, sounds sounds good. Okay. So more questions. Uh, okay, then let's thank uh, Jan and uh, again for this great talk. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the invite. Thank you. Yeah. I close the recording.